Hi guys, this is Sam uh, for SAP Careers and Job Seekers Group. Uh, so today we are going to talk about an important concept which you do during initial phase of a project in every consulting career or every consulting job. And that's called fit gap analysis. And what is a fit gap analysis? I'll discuss that and I'll give an example of what a fit gap analysis could be, right? Uh, so when you start a project, you will have to document uh, a design called functional design document and and that will be supported by a technical design document right and in the functional design document you will have to create uh, a fit gap analysis which gives you something called an effort estimate so let me show you what a fit gap analysis is so <clears throat> let's say uh, you have a system and the system works in a certain pre-configured manner, right? So when you have a system, it works in a certain pre-configured manner uh, and it will work on uh, what we call as a pre-configured scenario. Right? Now, most companies will not fit directly into this pre-configured scenario. So if you buy a laptop, uh, and you have factory setting, it's called the pre-configured scenario. So similarly, in uh, SAP or Oracle world, uh, primarily I'm talking about SAP because that's my background of 30 years in SAP. Uh, the pre-configured scenario come as uh, a best practice or a predefined process within the system. Now, when you talk to client, the client, we will try to map this pre-configured scenario to the client portal. So this is the pre-configured scenario and this is the client scenario, right? So what happens is now if you see this is not 100% overlapping the client scenario. So this area which doesn't meet the requirement for the client is called a fit gap analysis because essentially it's not fitting 100% into the uh, the pre-configured scenario given uh, by the vendor. So how will we get to this pre-configured scenario change to what we call as the fit gap analysis, right? So let's look at that. So what I would do is when when I uh, when one would start uh, documenting a functional design document or a technical design document, you start with what we call as workshops. So in the workshops, I told you the pre-configured scenario is called the best practice. So best practice is nothing but a most frequently used method of doing business by most corporate organizations, right? So that's called a best practice uh, and it, it has uh, nuances or uh, changes as per different industry. For example, pharma might be different from education, might be different from hospitality, might be different from manufacturing to automotive to maybe um, a hospitality industry. So each of them will have a, a kind of a variation to the best practice and those are called industry solutions. But this is what you get initially, right? Now, the second thing we will have is the client process and I'm gonna call it as an as is process. So this is called an as is process. This is called the best practice. Now, if we try to meet, so we're trying to fit the current process into the best practice for uh, SAP in this case, right? There will be few areas which will not meet. So these are called configuration areas. And these configuration areas will give you additional effort estimate. So 
So you have the best practice, which is already given to you. You have the as-is process, and then you have the effort estimate, which is, which is the differences between the as-is and the best practice. And this is also known as the 2B process. or a future mode of operation. So the, so the 2B process will include, uh, so if I call this as A and I call this as B, so this will include A plus B, both. So it'll be a combination of A and B both. So there you go guys. Uh, that is what we call as the fit gap analysis, which gives us something called an effort estimate. So we have the best practices, we have the as-is process, and then we have the 2B process. So 2B process is the SAP best practice plus uh, the fit gap analysis. So the fit gap analysis uh, is coming from here. It's between these two. These are components which you cannot use and you need to do extra effort in order to make it work, right? Let's quickly look at an example. Uh, for either of you, I'll take either a sales or a procurement process. So let's take a procurement process. So, so you have requirement gathering. And then you have a purchase requisition. Then you have a purchase order. Then you have a good receipt. Then you have an invoice receipt, right? And then you have payment, right? Now, SAP by default does two things. It does matching of good receipt to PO. It also does matching of good receipt to in, uh, invoice receipt. And it also matches to quality assurance, right? So PO, invoice received, quality assurance. So a lot of companies uh, may not be by default doing QA, right? So you might have to remove the QA piece, right? So, so if I remove the QA, that will tell me that this is not 100% meet, meeting the client's requirement and I had to remove my quality assurance process. The second thing is, before you purchase, you will have different types of vendors from whom you buy, right? So a typical vendor would be cash sale. So you pay cash or you do a credit sale or you do an assignment uh, sale. So those are typical the types of sales or you have a third party drop shit like, uh, you know, one of the online portals, right? So what will happen is uh, if you have a combination of these three, right? And in addition, you have material return authorization returns. This may not be pre-configured for the specific industry which you're working, right? So this would again be a fit gap analysis. So the first fit, fit gap analysis was QA. Second was a three-in-one vendor, which is saying I can either buy from the same vendor, uh, credit, cash, or assignment sales. And third could be a variation in the return material authorization process. So there you go, guys. So those uh, is called fit gap analysis and you need to document this and then you have to uh, basically say, what are the changes I'm going to do to my organization structure or enterprise structure? What are the changes I'm going to do to the master data level? And what are the changes I'm going to do to the transaction data level? And you need to document in your functional design and the technical design document. And this will give you uh, the fit gap analysis and the effort estimate, all right? So thank you for uh, listening to this video. Uh, we'll share more concept for you uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, I plan to release these videos on Thursday afternoon. So you get Friday, Saturday and Sunday uh, to kind of grasp 
and uh, come to terms with the with the concepts and then please uh, comment write uh, uh, and subscribe as well as share this uh, knowledge with other consultants so that they also benefit uh, from from uh, these concepts which are very very important and they are a mandatory concept for every consultant in their journey all right thank you guys uh, uh, for watching this video and this is sam signing off thank you